Welcome everybody, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Muscle Meets Mindful. Today we're gonna do a mix of yoga and cardio and they're both really important. I don't do a ton of cardio and I know I need to do more. So it's really good to keep your heart healthy, to get the blood flow going, for your stamina, for your breathing. Um, also any jumping or sort of plyometric stuff that we do is amazing for building bones and remin remineralization. So um, you can modify any of the hopping or jumping by just stepping or marching. So d if that's something that doesn't work for you, don't hop today. Um, and let's get right, in, right into it. Thank you so much for coming. Let's uh, go ahead and go into a child's pose here. So getting the hands onto the mat, onto the ground, stretch, walk the hands forward, reach the hips back, and take a little side to side movement, opening the side body under the shoulder blades, reaching the hips long, lengthen the spine, take a full inhale and exhale here. Inhale, rise up to all fours, round the spine, drape the tail. Inhale, roll the chest and hips up, head up. Go to the point where you don't feel like you're collapsing at the spine here, but feeling more length. And then find neutral. Tuck your toes under, reach your hips back any amount there. Inhale to all fours, exhale to your first downward facing dog, opening the back of the legs, lengthening the spine, and still keeping those roots down into the floor with the hands and feet. Inhale fully, exhale lower part of the way down, almost like you were gonna go to all fours, but then you, you hit the pause button. <laughs> And then go a little bit closer to the floor and hover in that all fours position, but don't put the knees down. And then optional here is to make sure basically that the hips are over the knees and the shoulders are over the wrists. And you can bring one knee towards one elbow and back, the other knee towards the other elbow and back, one hand towards opposite knee and back down the other hand towards opposite knee and back down. Take an inhale in that hover, exhale downward facing dog, pedal it out. And we're done for the day. I'm <laughs> just kidding, that was hard. Let's pass into our first plank pose, shoulders over the wrist, stable through the core here. And then we'll do a little bit of what we just did. Now, if you wanna go back to all fours or hovering all fours, you can. Right knee towards right elbow and back. Left knee towards left elbow and back. Right hand towards left thigh and back. Left hand towards right thigh and back. Inhale fully. Exhale, downward facing dog. Soften out the neck, relax the jaw. And then from here, lower all the way slowly down. We're not gonna hit the pause button, but we are gonna go slow. And then press back child's pose. Roll out those wrists. Rise back up to all fours. Tuck your toes under. Walk the fingertips back any amount. Now you can stay leaning forward or you can come up any amount, just opening the arches. That's gonna help elongate through the Achilles tendon. Really important here. And then we'll walk it all the way back and create our plank pose once again. You can always put the knees down at any time as long as you're lifting the low belly core in and up. And then start to just rock your heels forward and back. So not only are we kind of stretching through the back of the legs when we press our heels back, we're also um, really just getting into some opening of that joint itself and changing how we have to stabilize here. Then pause and then lower one knee down. <clears throat> Lift the opposite leg and then create a circle with that leg. You can tuck the lower toes or you can have the top of the foot down. Circle the leg, this could be small or big. Stabilizing at that low belly core, lifting the organs towards the spine, reverse your rotation. You'll start to feel this actually will kick that heart rate up. You're, this is a long lever and you're rotating in a big joint. And then from here, reach it back, maybe lift the all opposite arm away from you for a chakra of a krasana, and then round in elbow to knee. Inhale, extend, 
Draw to the midline, wrap it in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, in. Inhale, get long. And then let the hand and knee come down at the very same millisecond. That's going to work the core more. Press back into either a downward dog or a child's pose. Opportunity to find the breath and soften the neck. <clears throat> Slowly down to the knees. If you need padding for the knees, if you need a blanket, add your blanket, please. And then from here, I'm going to move over so I have room for this. Other leg reaches back, and then you'll start to draw a circle. Now, if you need to bend the knee and draw um, a circle with the knee instead of the leg long, that's a little bit easier, so you might do that. Stay connected to your core, and then reverse your rotation. And you don't get any extra points for going fast. In fact, go a little slower than you want to. Ooh, that actually, for me, really increases the work, and I'm feeling those hips, feeling those glutes getting stronger. And then pause, stabilize, other arm reaches. When you feel okay there, take an inhale. Exhale, wrap it in. Think cat pose in your back. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw it in. Even lift your ankle towards the sitting bone. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw in. Inhale, go long. Exhale, hand and knee are going to find the mat <laughs> at the very same moment. Downward facing dog. If you like to take vinyasas in your practice, here's an option to do one now. Plank pose. You can take chaturanga here, an upward dog, or you can go to the floor and take cobra. Exhale. Take it back to your downward facing dog. Look to the top of your mat. Take your feet there. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, rise halfway up, maybe bending the knees a lot. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Bend the knees now, even if you didn't before. Draw some weight. So sometimes here we put more weight in the ball joints of the feet. Draw some weight into the heels so the work goes into the glutes a little bit more. Lift your organs away from your spine. Reach your arms forward. If reaching your arms is forward is too much, to the sides or back. Three, two, one, hinge with the torso up into your chair pose. If you want to make a change to the arm position now, feel free to do that. I'm going to go ahead and get into my triceps a little bit by reaching back. Again, even distribution of the weight across the feet, so not just jamming into the front of the foot, but finding anchor in the heels. Inhale, stand up tall, reach up. Exhale, hands through to the heart. Take a deep breath here. Shake off all the clutter, and then we'll go ahead and open. Feet are not as wide as you can go. You want to still feel like you have structure beneath you, but they're definitely wider than the hips. <clears throat> and then from here, you're just going to begin. You can take your hands to your heart or your hips and just start to shift. Knees are tracking roughly over the toes, side to side. And this is going to change. So this is a little bit more, when the toes are forward, it's a little bit more internally rotated than when we switch. So come up and now take your toes to point out at an angle. So toes and knees point the same direction. And we're going to go a little side to side here. Just lubricating the hips. And this will kick up your heart rate a little bit. Good. And then come up to standing, turn the toes forward again. Bend into one knee, reach the arms, roll the palms up, three breaths here. If you want a little bit more, bend lower in the bent knee leg. Maybe a few breaths. It's a lot of work in that leg and hip. We'll come on up, straightening, reaching. Exhale, hands through to the heart. Going to the other side, bending. We're also opening the inner thigh of the extended leg. Arms might reach for a little more work. Get deep into it to where you don't feel like you're harming your low back and you can still breathe, but you're really feeling the work. 
Inhale, reach up. Turn your heels in again. Bring your hands to your heart. Sit down into a goddess squat and your roughly knees over the heels here. Evenly distribute the weight in your feet and find a little lift in the lower through the hips. So you don't wanna take the hips lower than the knees, maybe the same height or for most of us, a little higher. So hopefully you're not talking at the screen as I'm talking to you because it really makes you lose your breath a little faster. <laughs> All right, pause, reach the arms out again. Pulse the thumbs back just a little bit. Open the chest, <clears throat> working the shoulders a little bit. And then now bend your elbows, so like cactus arms, and we're gonna work the obliques, taking that over to the right side. Inhale, center, and over to the left. Inhale, center, now take the forearms together. They can come close, if not together, open. Take it laterally. And up, second side, and up. Close or come close, and open, and then let everything straighten up. Turn your toes forward and shake it out. So you might wanna move the hips or rotate them around a little bit, maybe the neck and shoulders. And then from here, we'll do a little bit of some tapping. So. I'll show you, we're gonna use that same thing kind of going side to side here, and we're gonna change it up a little bit. So I would recommend turning the toes out a little bit on this one, depending on what your hips need. We're gonna bend into one side, I'm gonna start with my right, and then I'm gonna take the heel of my other foot towards its sitting bone as I straighten the original bent knee. Then I'm gonna come back down, shift, and reach. All right, so, Choose your footing that feels good to you. The main thing is there's a shift and a heel to sitting bone, okay? You can use your arms as you want them. So you might even do some reaching and pressing, land softly, shift, press, land, shift, press, land, shift, press. Stay with that. So you might not have made this shape before or these shapes, and that's okay, it's gonna take a while for the brain to learn that this is something the body can do. And if you waver and wobble, don't worry, you're creating new neural pathways and probably new muscular connections. And last one, up and down. Soften the arms, let the arms just hang. Focus on the legs, breathing here, then bring your hands to your heart. Lift a little bit and lower, press into your heels, open the knees a little bit wider. Option to lift the arms and option for breath of fire. So if you know breath of fire, um, it's breathing, exhaling through the nasal passages forcefully. The inhale is passive. And as you exhale, you're drawing your organs towards your spine. So to begin, inhale. Inhale, reach. Turn your heels back, exhale, float the arms down. Do you need a Kleenex? <laughs> it's like, it's very Austin allergy time to do that, so a little uncouth. <laughs> I, I never claimed to be couth. All right, let's make the other side of the mat the new front, and we'll come up to a mountain pose. So that type of work probably kicked up your heart rate and that breathing as well. So let's take a moment to come back to our breath and our alignment. And then just taking a moment to be grateful and thankful for the fact that our lungs can move this way and our hearts can beat this way. Inhale, reach up, full sun salutation. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, take it back, plank pose. You choose how you're moving through the rest of your vinyasa. Make sure your breath is connected to that movement. And we'll join in downward facing dog together. <clears throat> Always love this pose to really soften the weight of my head down because I have a tendency to overwork in the jaw and the neck. 
and this really just lets that go. And then from here, look to the new top of your mat and take your feet there. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. We're gonna find, again, weight coming not just in the front of the feet, but also in the heels. This time we're gonna take the arms back. Turn your palms up, reach your fingertips as if they could plug into the wall behind you. Fire up those triceps. And we're just gonna start to do tiny, tiny pulsing movement here. You might have seen this in some Pilates classes and things like that. Really, really effective and really difficult. So don't take the work into your neck. Remain in the breath and actively arms as straight as you can. Pulse, pulse, pulse while in that chair pose. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, exhale, float the arms down as if they were gonna touch, but then inhale, come all the way up and open the elbows out to the sides and back. Lift the heart any amount. And inhale, reach up and exhale, hands to the heart. Deep breath comes in. And again, shake off all the clutter, simplify your moment. And we'll do some taps, but this time we're gonna stay facing this direction. So bend the knees, not as deeply as you just did. Step the right set of toes back, okay? And the same thing that goes with what you did earlier, if you wanna use your arms differently than I am, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna reach my arms forward, <clears throat> and I'm gonna find a line of energy from my fingertips to my back heel. And as I'm ready, I'm going to draw my elbows in and back, make a little fist, a soft fist, and draw the same leg that went back, that knee comes up. Reaching long, and bring it up. I'll use my inhale to go long, exhale, take it up. Inhale for that leaning forward lunge, exhale, standing balance. Reach, draw in, and last one. Reach and draw in. You can stay here or put your right hand on your waist, left hand on the front of the knee. Get very long in the spine, and then any amount of twist to the right. If your shoulders are feeling okay and you wanna reach that right arm back, feel free. If you're very, very open in the hamstrings and IT band and you want to reach for the outer edge of the right foot and stretch that long, you can, or you could use a strap here. Lifting the torso up and then we'll unwind to a bent knee hold, breathing here. And then from here, standing splits or warrior three. So I'll show you a warrior three option. Fingertips come down, leg goes straight back or drawing in, fingertips down, torso closer to the lower leg, lifting up through the upper leg. So I'm not trying to open my hips here so much as roll that top hip down a little bit more. Shoulder blades onto the back, neck is long. I'm gonna lower into a low lunge, fingertips to the floor, stepping back, enough distance between the feet that this feels good in my hips. Hands come down. Plank pose, rocking a little forward and back. So like we did earlier, then add a pause. Separate your feet, hips distance are a little bit wider. And then from here, right knee to right elbow back, left knee to left elbow back, right hand to left thigh, back down, left hand to right thigh, finding the mat. And then from here, make sure that you feel nice and stable through your core and lift one leg up any amount. Maybe create a circle, go nice and slow with this, like you did earlier in your hover. This will be harder. Reverse rotations. You can put your knee down at any time. This is a whole lot of work. And then lower down, switch sides, lift, circle. The circle is smaller even than when your knees were hovering or down. And reverse that rotation. Is your heart pounding? <laughs> Mine is. And down, downward facing dog. Draw a deep breath in and let it go. Before we do the other side of our standing taps, we'll lower our knees down, press back into a child's pose. Knees could be together or separated. You might roll the wrists out, stretch the neck. 
and then we'll make our way back to the top of the mat. Downward facing dog, you can hop or step to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. No chair pose this time. Yay! Inhale, come all the way up. And some STD. Well, we ate a little too soon because chair pose. All right, chair pose. You can use your arms as you want them. If you want to use that kind of drawing in like this, I think that's a Fist of Fire, Sean Korn. If you don't know Sean Korn, she's a great yoga teacher. <clears throat> All right, my left leg's gonna come back. I think that's what side you might need to do too. Reach the arms forward. And let's just practice a little bit with this one. See if we can draw the left knee in, elbows back, balance. Hinge a little bit in those hips, reach the left toes back, land softly. Exhale, in and up. Lean and tap. Back to center standing. And continue with your breath. You don't have to tap near as far back as I am. You can tap right here and come back up if balance is a little tricky today. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna switch sides for the twist. You stay exactly where you are for your balance. Staying here, knee comes in. You have the option to put your hands at your heart or the waist or right hand to the left knee, left hand to the left waistline. Lengthen, maybe reach the left arm back behind you. You can stay exactly here or reach for the outer foot or use a strap, elongate that left waistline for your twist here. <laughs> And we'll come back, bent knee position here. Interlace your fingers in front of that knee or underneath. And then we'll choose, are we taking a warrior three? Maybe hands don't come down this time. Maybe we're going into that standing split. Little note about that standing split. Sometimes hugging into the midline, drawing the heel towards its sitting bone, knees towards one another, and then blooming out of that, you can get a little more support than just kind of trying to kick that leg up. So drawing in and then blooming and pressing. Shoulder blades on the back. Breathing here. If there are any hand position changes you want to do, maybe grabbing on to your lower ankle here. Fingertips down, bend your standing leg, lower your back leg, find your low lunge. Say hello to plank, but not for long because we're going to create a side plank. So right hand comes down, either stack the feet or you can stagger, or you can step that top foot in front. Breathing here. Now, if your top hip is back like mine is, and if you're cheating like me, <laughs> draw your top hip more right above your lower hip. Ooh, it's a lot harder. And then from here, option to make it a little more challenging. Bend your top knee and tap forward and back forward and back and then full side plank full classic plank vinyasa or maybe this is a great time for you to rest so if the breath isn't quite there then come into a rest if you need downward dog instead of child's pose find that so notice what comes up as far as where you're holding your tension and use a full breath cycle, at least one, to let it go and soften it out. And then from here, we're gonna take that side angle and the taps, if you're taking the taps, to the other side. I'll turn away, turn this way, you can stay as you are. Let's go ahead and from here, just create that plank pose. Left hand comes down, choose the plank that's right for you, and create it. Now, taking that back hip, drawing it directly over, you'll start to feel more work come to the glutes the, on the lower leg. And then from here, maybe you want a little bit more, bend and tap. So it's like you're just dipping your toe in the water. How's that little pond? Ooh, too cold. How's that little pond? Too hot. <laughs> oh man, there wasn't one that was just right. All right, 
and then from here create that side plank full classic plank and then you know you've always got the option where to go i'm going to go into child's pose so that i can catch my breath <laughs> And just noticing that you have changed in not too long how you're breathing, the sweat on your skin, your heart rate. Um, you don't need a full hour, hour and a half practice to really make some good positive changes. And then from here, come to all fours and just find any movement that spine needs. Apparently my puppy, I don't know if you can hear that, Josephine is wishing she was doing some cardio with us downward facing dog raise your left leg bend it in towards you step through into a lunge and then pivot into a wide forward fold give those hamstrings and the neck a chance to release spine maybe you're here or maybe you're on blocks okay don't have to be low for it to be positively impactful bend the knees Round the spine, roll, head and arms dangle. Roll all the way up. Knees will eventually straighten, shoulders will eventually open out. Good. Deep breath comes in. And sigh it out. So we're gonna cross the midline a little bit here behind us. So it's a move that like, if you're just in your regular life, you don't kind of do stuff like What'd you say? Or what, what? Right? So it's good for our brains, again, really a lot of good neurology happening here through movement. So from here, come a little bit towards the front of your mat, bend your knees, okay? Um, with your right leg, go ahead and reach that behind you. So just reach it behind you, find the toes touching, and then press through that heel, bend your front knee. And then you can stay just like this, without using the arms, or you can reach the arms back towards that back leg a little bit. You can reach one arm up and over, you can cross the midline. There's a lot of ways to play with this, but one thing I really wanna point out is your front knee is bent, okay? So you're not here, you're here, opening up that side body. Nice work. And then from here, reach long, press your back heel closer in, and step it beside the other foot. Okay, so we're gonna add on. That was just kind of giving your body and your brain a little training. Now from here, same leg steps back behind, okay? You're gonna reach and find any lateral towards the side that that back leg is reaching to. Then reach the arms, press your back heel closer in so that you're finding more weight in your standing leg. And this time you're gonna reach that back knee off to the side, external rotation, almost like you're almost like you're doing a tree pose, but you're reaching the leg more to the side. So press the heel, land that front foot, and reach to the side. Great, I think. <laughs> and then we're gonna add on from there. Let me scoot back a little bit. Reach, straighten the arms, press the heel in, lift, land, lateral, straight, press and whoop, lift, last one. Press back, open, reach the arms, heel draws in, take it to the side. Good, breathe here, and you're going to lift with little pulses that extended knee, or excuse me, that bent knee hip. Lift, lift, lift. It's probably a movement you don't do very much, but you're gonna start to feel that work. Really strengthening, three, two, one, cross, reach up, exhale, bend the knees, any amount, fold. Breathing here. Live a little bit more into the feet. Keep the feet crossed if you can. Inhale, come all the way back up. Bring the hands to the heart. Open the other knee to the side and then walk everything open into a wide footed position. Reach out and up. This time coming into the shoulders differently. Hands are either at the waist or interlaced behind you or on a strap. Open, inhale. Exhale, fold. Soften what can soften. Root down into the floor. Big breath in and out. 
Inhale, with or without the bind, and with or without a bend in the knees, come all the way back up. Release the bind in the hands if it was there. And then we're gonna step closer to the other end of the mat. We're gonna do a little practice. Ooh, that dog. I'm so glad my 12-year-old son is watching my puppy, watching our puppy. Soften the knees, reach back behind you, find your balance, see how that feels, open any amount, find whatever feels right with the arms, give yourself that stretch, reach out, press the heel a little closer in, and come on back to standing. All right. So we just want to give the body a preview of where we're going before we ask to do it more quickly. So we'll try it again. Hands can be wherever you need them to be, reaching back, maybe reaching up and over. So my left leg is back and my left arm comes over. So I'm creating this nice long line of opening and then crossing the midline with the other arm. Press. Maybe I'm gonna reach, live in my front knee a little bit more, and come up. All right, we're gonna add that lift to the side with the knee. Find your stretch, open the side body and the psoas here, press through the back heel, then take it a little closer in so you're more rooted in the front leg. Reach and out to the side. Step. Stretch laterally, side, land, and lift. Yeah, let's keep going. Reach, arms out, land in the front foot, lift the knee, one more like that. Land, side body lengthens, press it long, land in that front foot, and take it to the side, and here we go with those lifts. So this is something I've actually never done in another class, but I do it myself to get into the deep hip and core connection here. And a little bit of that pulse again kicks up that heart rate as well. Three, two, and one. I'm glad that's done. Cross your legs. Inhale to reach. Exhale, fold. If you need blocks here, use blocks or books. Soften it out. Put roots down into your feet. Feel how when you root into the feet differently, it feeds the stretch in the hips differently. Keep your feet crossed if you can. Inhale, come all the way up. Hands to the heart. Slide that back knee off to the side and then step wide. Last time we'll do Prasarita Padatanasana, which is our wide-legged fold. You get to choose the hand position that works for you. So maybe you'll take, take your hands to your waist. You might take yogi toe lock, so your first two fingers and thumb around your big toes. Inhale, reach. Exhale, shoulder blades on the back, fold. You don't have to fold far. You wanna to fold to where you're feeling a stretch and breath is still coming really readily and you're not fighting for it. And inhale, rise halfway up. Shift to that first side of your mat where you started and step back into plank pose. And then from here, you're going to take your thumbs to touch, okay? So they're like this. And <clears throat> step one foot as close to the outside of your right hand as you can and take it back. And then the left foot steps and back. So it might just be here. It might look, look like this for you. Guess what? You're still really working. More of those obliques, right? And step back, stepping and back. So this again, just like the theme of class, is going to kick up your heart rate. And we're also doing a fair bit of deep core work, which is not just front body, but also back and also internal and external obliques, pelvic floor, all of that important stuff. One more each side. Good, breathe here and separate your hands to your classic downward dog position and reach it back. Woo. 
Let the shoulders open more than they normally would in a classic downward dog. Drop the heart down. Shoulder blades onto the back. Put a little bit more surface area of your feet to the floor without stressing the back of the knees. If that's too much, then bend the knees. And lower all the way down into that child's pose with your rotational wrist movements. Soften into the neck. And then just let the breath and the body collaborate together. Give that a moment. And we're gonna work that posterior chain a little bit more. So when I was talking about core, well, this is also part of our trunk, part of our core. So I am gonna use a blanket on this one under my knees. So I invite you to do the same. So pause, pause, hit the pause button. If you don't have one, go grab one, join me. And come to all fours. So we're gonna work the glutes now. Um, this is an unweighted video, we don't have weights, but for those of you who have weights near you and you wanna add a, a weight behind one knee, you can. Or if you wanna add a block behind one knee, you can. It's kind of, that's, it's pretty awkward to have the block, but I will show you with it. So let's take the block behind the left knee, organize the muscles towards the spine, hug that block in, and we're just gonna add a little pulse. So the last time we pulsed was out to the side and standing, and now we're pulsing up and down here. Now, when you're holding the block or a weight, you're holding your heel closer to your sitting bone, so you're contracting more, okay? If you're not, you might be more here with less contraction. So you can choose how much contraction. Maybe you're holding nothing, but you decide to contract more here, okay? So you gauge how much contra contraction goes to the back of the leg. Pressing and pulsing, so it's not super fast. Pressing and pulsing, spreading the toes, rotating the front of the hip a little more down. Ooh. Breathing into that and letting yourself get really nice and strong through the hips. It's not just the upper hip, by the way. You can probably feel that lower hip is stabilizing you and working really hard too. Three, two, one. All right, because we really condensed and contracted that hamstring, I want you to take your block, move it out of the way, you might use it in a second, and step the leg that you were just pulsing, that was my left, forward, and stretch through your toes. So the back of your heel is down. I'm still roughly hips over back knee, and I'm just gonna stretch that out. Maybe I'll use my block and put it on the inside of that chin, that ankle, and just breathe there. Maybe fingertips to the floor. Take your pinky toe edge of your foot and wrap it as if it's reaching towards your outer hip just for that IT band stretch. Inhale. Exhale, you can fold down any amount and tilt your sitting bones up a little behind you if that feels safe. If it doesn't feel safe, then that's not right. <laughs> then don't ever do it <laughs> um, unless it ever does. All right, very carefully bringing yourself back to all fours and a downward facing dog. Before we do the other side, so you can move your block out of the way if you're using it, before you go to the other side, take the ball joints of your feet close. They might be touching or just close. And you might have to watch this one first before you join in, so feel free to do that. You're gonna bend your knees, press your hips back. Heels are lifted for sure, so don't put your heels down. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna lift my hips and my heels. I'm gonna reach and rotate my heels and hips to the right. Bend and reach my heart back towards my right outer leg. I'm gonna lift, come up a little bit, rotate my heels and hips to the left, bend my knees, and then reach my torso towards my outer left leg. Inhaling, twisting, exhaling back. Inhaling, heels rotate, exhale back. And that's the flow, and it's really plenty cardiovascular. Hips go to the whoop, opposite side, <laughs> trying to look at the camera, as the knees. You can take this slow or quicker, depending on your needs, and depending on what feels good. One more time, each side, and back, and downward facing dog. Deep breath in, big sigh out, 
lower to the knees, and roll out the wrists. So anytime we're really on the hands a lot, I just like to give them a little break. And you might even like to turn the fingertips towards the knees and breathe open here or hinge back any amount that adds a stretch to the underside of the forearms. And then if you were using a weight or a block behind your first knee that you did, then go ahead and add it on here now. I'm regretting that I was using that block because now I have to do it on this side. All right, reach that up. Remember, you're not going to the side, but more so foot facing up and then slow pulsing here. So <clears throat> working those glutes, working those hamstrings, all the while not sagging in the belly here, but keeping that support. Even if you could get the foot higher by sagging the belly, don't. I'd rather see the foot not going as high while you still keep that support through the whole trunk. Breathing here. Keep those toes spreading. Sometimes if you point, uh, you can get, you're more apt to get a cramp in the calf or the arch of the foot. So, five, four, three, two, one, and draw it in, remove the prop if you used one, step forward very carefully, shift back, hips over back knee, spread your toes, half Hanumanasana, take your right outer foot towards your right outer hip and breathe here. So stay nice and high on this one to begin. And then you'll have the possibility of maybe folding in any amount, lifting the sitting bones. Let's just see what feels good. So you're feeding your stretch with your breathing. My favorite thing to think about when I'm trying to get space in the body and calm down is that I'm painting that area of tension with my breath. So I'll think of a color, it's usually green, and I will paint the back of my leg with that breathing, up and down. Paint the fence. Mr. Miyagi style. Did I date myself? Yeah, I'm 40. All right, step it back. And you can take your props and move them to the sides. You don't need your blanket anymore either. And we'll go to the last downward dog of the practice. Stretching back here again, just giving those hamstrings a nice opportunity to open and the neck a chance to soften. And then from here, we will lower down and come all the way on to our hips, bring the legs forward and shake that out a little bit. Good, soften the neck, roll it around. So I chose to kind of not do as much um, sort of, we didn't really do any hopping. I had thought at the beginning of the practice that we might, but I think because I'm a little tired and I was already kicking up my heart rate that I skipped that, but I will do one. So if you were looking forward to that, there will be a hopping one. Hmm, beware. Come on down to your back, take your time getting there. Go as slow as molasses, round one vertebra at a time. The inner thighs are a part of this, so the knees usually wanna splay out. Draw them gently in. Doesn't mean they're touching, it just means there's some activity towards the midline. And we'll lower all the way down. And then roll your head side to side. Open that neck out a little bit here. And then from here, lift the knees. Now it's really hard to judge sometimes. So a lot of times people think this is knees over hips, but really it's further back. That's a lot harder to stabilize. So do attempt that if that's okay, and attempt keeping your low back a little closer to the floor. Then interlace your fingers behind your head and maybe lift up. Elbows are not splayed to the side, but more so the shoulder blades are wrapping around this back body. And then from here, without moving the knees, you're just gonna move one elbow over towards the other knee. And you'll come to center, the other elbow towards the other knee, and center. Cross and back, cross and back. So you're trying to keep the shoulder blades basically off of the mat 
and you're not lowering down in the middle. You're just coming to center. So it's not down, up, cross, down. It's not this one. It's up the whole time. Very, very deep core musculature at work and also the legs. Then pause in the center here. Extend one leg um, parallel to the floor. Bring it back up. Other leg parallel. Back up. Keep going. If this is too much, come out of it at any time and do something that feels more suitable for your body. Or just <laughs> go to sleep. Take a little nap. One more each side. Feet down, head and chest down, hands onto the belly, let the belly release, let the hips release. So it's good to know when to work and when to rest. So because we did a lot of work in those hip flexors, we're going to lift into a bridge and it can be a baby bridge or a restorative bridge or any height that feels right. So I think it's really nice if you have something, a pillow or a bolster or a block to lift up and put underneath you, underneath your sacrum. So that triangle, not the tailbone, not the low back, but right in between those two and breathe here. Or you can scooch the shoulder blades underneath, lift the pelvis any amount and use the action of the adductors, the inner thighs, coming gently into magnetism towards one another, but not touching. Arms could Come closer and fingers can interlace if that feels right. Breathing here, a little more life in the feet. Inhale and exhale, slowly coming down. If you need to lift the heels for that, if that feels better in the spine, then do that. Bring the legs forward, reach the arms back, wiggle and open. You might take this a little laterally here. Point your toes, then flex. Point the heels back and forward. And then let it soften all the way down. Choose any comfortable position for your Shavasana. And thank you so much for joining me and getting that heart rate a little up today. I really appreciate that you just, you made the decision to show up and it means a lot to me if you let me know in the comments what you're looking for, how I can help. And if you can click subscribe, um, that just helps lend credibility to the channel and hopefully I'm credible. So <laughs> I didn't say incredible, credible. <laughs> so thanks for being here. Have a beautiful day. Namaste everyone, everyone, everyone. Too much cardio.